Hi, my name is Henry Ament. I live in Orono, Minnesota, and I play for the Orono Spartan. And then my favorite hockey player is Zach Parisi. Hi, my name is Dylan Otten. I'm from Burnsville, Minnesota, and in the winter I play for the Minnesota Blades, and my favorite hockey player is Connor McDavid. Hi, my name is Cade Sherman. I'm from Rosemount, Minnesota. I play for Rosemount Irish in the winter. My favorite hockey player is Matthew Barzell. My name is Gavin Kaur. I live in Rochester, Minnesota. My winter team is Rochester, and my favorite hockey player is Connor McDavid. My name is Eddie Oren. I live in Mendota Heights, Minnesota. I play for Sibley Warriors in the winter, and my favorite hockey player is Austin Matthews. My name is Jack Colchin. I'm from Chanhassen, Minnesota. Um, in winter, I play for Chaska Chanhassen, and my favorite player is Steven Stamkos. My name is Colin Conway, and I'm from Farmington, Minnesota, and I play for Farmington Tigers in the winter. My favorite hockey player is Austin Matthews. My name is Jack Stanius. My hometown is Force Lake, and my hockey team that I play for in the winter is Force Lake Rangers, and then my favorite player has got to be Marion Hosa. Hi, my name is Jacob Guile. Um, I'm from Farmington, Minnesota. Um, I play for the Farmington Tigers, and my favorite player is Dustin Bufflin. Hi, my name is Jackson Johnson. I'm from Matamidi, and my winter club is the Matamidi Zephyrs, and my favorite player is Mario Lemieux. Hi, my name is Owen Lunneborg. I live in Bloomington, Minnesota. I play for Bloomington Jefferson in the winter, and my favorite hockey player is Braden Holpe. My name is JJ Thibodeau. I live in Waltham, Massachusetts, and my I, I play on the Boston Junior Eagles, and my favorite player is Carey Price. Hi, my name is Houston Hur, and I'm from Wyndham, New Hampshire. My favorite winter hockey club is the Middlesex Islanders, and my favorite player is Mike Fisher. My name is Nick Evans. I live in Malden, Massachusetts. My winter club is the Islanders Hockey Club, and my favorite player is Errol Carlson. My name is Miles Brosnan. My hometown is Winchester, Massachusetts. My winter hockey club is the Boston Junior Eagles, and my favorite player is Charlie McAvoy. Hello, my name is Ben. I live in South Boston, Massachusetts. I play on the Boston Junior Eagles, and my favorite hockey player is Connor McDavid. Hi, my name is Justin Graff. I live in Lincoln, Massachusetts. My winter club is the Islanders Hockey Club, and my favorite player is Connor McDavid. My name is James Connor, and my hometown is Amherst, New Hampshire. My winter hockey club is Marlboro Miniman Flames, and my favorite player is Alexander Ovechkin. Hi, my name is Van Martin. My hometown is Raven, New Hampshire. My winter club is the Islanders Hockey Club, and my favorite player is Patrice Bergeron. Hi, my name is Freddie Meyer. I live in Winchester, Massachusetts. My winter club is the Boston Junior Eagles, and my favorite player is Connor McDavid. Hi, my name is Egan Beveridge. Um, I live in East Kingston, New Hampshire. I play for the Islanders Hockey Club, and my favorite player is Connor McDavid. Hi, my name is Nick Thornton. My hometown is Danvers, Mass. Um, my winter club is the Valley Junior Warriors, and my favorite player is John Tavares. Hello, my name is Darren Iverson. I live in Littleton, Massachusetts. My winter club is the Assabet Patriots, and my favorite hockey player is Connor McDavid. Hi, my name is Aaron Nova Bifo. My hometown is Calgary, Alberta. Winter team is Bow River Bruins, and my favorite player is Austin Matthews. Hi, my name is Jake Tavares. My hometown is Belmont, Massachusetts. My winter club is the Boston Junior Eagles. My favorite player is Sidney Crosby.
Last chance to survive and advance on Saturday at the show 2018. It's the North American Hockey Showcase presented on Youth Hockey Hub. We had a lot of fun with the Continental Divide with the three teams bumped out of the postseason of the show 2018 earlier today. But now back to the business of crowning a champ. And it starts with the number one seed, unbeaten New England at 6-0. and 45 goals and just seven allowed through the tournament. Taking on the number four seed, Minnesota. Even Steven, 30 goals scored, 30 goals allowed. J.J. Thibodeau out of Waltham, Massachusetts. He'll be in net in red and gray. For the vaunted New England squad, Owen Lunneborg from right here. Excuse me, not Lunneborg. It'll be Jackson Johnson from Grant, Minnesota. who Will be between the pipes trying to turn away this potent offense. Top three scorers, all with seven goals for New England, and that is how they have built themselves into the number one seed in this tournament. Here in the postseason, it's quickly a shot for Cole Braunschausen. As he sends it from the near side circle, stopped up quickly. So 30 goals and scored and allowed by Minnesota, who finished three and three with an overtime victory. That's through their quarterfinal win which was 8-3 over Great Lakes earlier in the day. Back to 15 minutes, stop time periods. Minnesota trying to get off to a good start. They kept this team scoreless in the final game of pool play through the first seven minutes of regulation. And eventually, that game would drop the way of New England. Loose pucks streaming around the near side, poked back down. Picked up underneath and moved ahead by Dylan Otten. Not quite all the way out of the zone. It's Brownshausen who's able to tap it past Core, his teammate, and try and catch up to it in the neutral zone. Van Martin flying down the ice. For New England to provide some pressure. One minute gone. A little feeling out process, but these two teams very familiar with one another. The last game New England played was against Minnesota. New England caught the bye. So it's their first game of the day. They're coming in cold, as it were. They beat Minnesota 7-3. That was the final. Down the ice, back to the middle, and that one just trickled in towards the pipe. I think Van Martin got caught in between. He had a man he could throw it to. Never did let the pass go, and the puck slid dangerously close to a goal anyway. Fighting through neutral ice. That's Dylan Otten out of Burnsville. As the whistle comes up, and a high stick. And the high stick and the first penalty of the day comes up on New England. And it's Aaron Obabifo out of Calgary, Alberta. So an early chance. And that's when the first goal came against Minnesota in that pool play matchup that went to New England. It was shorthanded. Dunking in front of the net, Justin Graff out of Lincoln, Massachusetts. Touched it, took it back up in front of the goal. Quick shot, deflected down, still a loose puck right in the crease and finally swept away by Graff. He's able to move it up the ice on the near side to Van Martin. Martin with Graff now cycling in on the left, sends a bouncing puck through that tipped off the defense in between. Graff outside the circle, working back. Jack Colchin was able to knock it away, and from out below the goal line, it comes back up to Otten. Otten in neutral ice. Otten with five goals in the tournament so far. He lost it, poked away once and twice, and now controlled by New England. Back it comes for Beveridge. Egan Beveridge, one of the seven goal scorers for New England. He lost it, popped back off the wall to Otten. Otten steps inside a defender, tries to go high, and ducks back in and has it poked away. Started to drive in, and that's that stingy defense at work. It's not all just about the goaltending of J.J. Thibodeau. Back the other way it comes, Freddie Meyer. Meyer spinning around at the dot on the near side. Lost the puck, Minnesota comes to it. Not invincible, but New England has found ways to appear so and pull away late. Here's another look for Meyer as he drives in on Johnson, puts that one up right into his left shoulder. That was actually Beveridge flying in. Either way you slice it, the save for Johnson. Back out up top, Amit snakes the puck away. He's running with Stanius. Stanius scored their first goal of their quarterfinal victory. As he streaks down the middle. Amit fires it high. That deflected some off of Thibodeau. 
late charges. Bigger scoring second periods and third periods than first periods. It's been the way New England has made it work. And now fresh at even strength. Ahmed had a little bit of open net as he drew out Thibodeau and fires it high. So the penalty expires with 11.15 to go here in this first period. Back it comes. There's Billy McOslin. McOslin dumped it back. Thought he had somebody trailing. It's just Ahmed. Henry Ahmed. He tries to tap it back towards the edge of the zone. Stanius finishes the clear. Back out towards neutral ice. Tipped around off a couple of sticks. Down at the feet of Stanius. Stanius enters in past the New England blue line. He'll fire that one wide. Nobody home on the far side. Chaz Lentz was the closest. Had to watch it go and trail back. Puck popped up. Tipped up. Bronzhausen looks for some of the net. Found some of Thibodeau instead. It's cleared away. More pressure from Minnesota. They're coming out flying. They know the task is tough to beat this New England team for the first time. They're bringing some pressure. There's pressure to the back of the net, and it's William Bell who will score first for New England. Flying home and in motion. Knocks it past Johnson. It's 1-0. New England strikes first, and what a bullet. It's the shift ends. Oba Bifo takes the draw with the fresh line out there. Ducking below the goal line. Pass back out in front. Graf has a kick off his skate. Down in front, Johnson having to go down on his pads, and eventually the whistle's coming in as they continue to hack at it and blow things dead. So Johnson... Baptism by fire here early. Rocky Mountain and Great Plains, the other two teams still alive in the 2018 North American Showcase. Teams fighting for a chance to play breakfast hockey tomorrow at 8.30. Two on two hockey coming back the other way as Dylan Otten flings it down. Loose puck popping off the boards. First man to it was Martin. Martin's out of Raymond, New Hampshire. Back towards neutral ice, intercepted there by Eddie Aron. Aron knocks it back, coming from Minnesota. A little push on Cade Sherman as he tried to get free as we go under 10 minutes to go here in the first period. It's one thing to stay tight, but Minnesota has to find a way to solve this defense. It pops free to Martin. Martin at the circle, spins around and puts it on the pads of Johnson. Makes the save, still alive. Out in front and swept away eventually by Dylan Otten. Otten gets him out of the frying pan and moves it back the other way. Three on two with a third defender coming. Otten to the circle on the near side. He'll reach and fire the shot off Thibodeau's blocker. Drops down on the far side for Colchin. Colchin tried to swing it all the way out and did take it all the way out of the zone. Intercepted by Graf. Graf pushes it down into the zone, pops right back out. Taken in again by Meyer. Back to Martin. Martin from the circle, weaving his way through two defenders. Martin hacking at it. Minnesota with a chance, but it's at the feet of his skater, and Colchin can't find it. And the battle for it ensues. Back to the middle. Sweeping shot. Not enough on that, so it sails wide. Nick Thornton there in the middle. Now Linz can play it backward for Minnesota. Thornton skating over to help out Beveridge. Beveridge drops behind the goal. Looking to peek up, he's got a man high, it's James Conner. Instead goes opposite side, blue line, long shot, popping high, bounding down. That was tapped by a stick up tall. Beveridge slams it off the boards, looking for somebody on the far side. Instead, it's Amit from Minnesota. Amit had the puck tapped, but he's still able to play it off the glass, still not out. New England with a man in front, shot goes right in on Johnson, and he swallows it up. So he had Thornton bearing down on him. Needed to make the clean save there, and he did so, but still a face-off in the Minnesota zone coming up. one nothing. Billy McOslid. McOslid from Westwood, Massachusetts, takes the draw, wins it. Back out to the blue line, shot flung in there wide. Pass coming across, tipped by Amit. McOslid will tip it down towards the crease. It's touched by a New Englander, and then back down below the goal line. Deflected off a Minnesota stick. They're doing a lot of... Good work getting sticks on the puck, but not being able to clear it. Betzold tried to fly out of the zone with it. He overskated it as it goes down into the corner. Betzold's got another chance, but this one's going to whip around. And Darren Iverson, the defenseman 
for New England. Able to touch it first and keep it in. Skating back out, your goal scorer, Bell. Bell crosses the blue line with the pass to the far side. There it hits Guile's stick. Guile looked to take it up out of the zone, and it's still not out. Bell has it again against Guile. Left from McGoslin. McGoslin from the corner. Working with Bell outside the circle. He'll sail back out to Iverson. Iverson just holds it in as Betzold tried to pressure. Iverson sends that one in towards the crease. Tapped away by Minnesota Stick. Still down in this zone. Tavares looking for the feed from Bell now. Bell drops high of the circle. Dumps that one down. Headed for Tavares. And he'll catch up with it behind the goal. Down into the corner. McOsland to Tavares. McOsland over to give some help. Puck springs free. Nobody saw it. McOslin tracks it down. Whips it back to Bell. And this one's going to pop up into the rafters and settle back down in the netting. Drop down over the glass. And it's at least going to bring a break for Minnesota with 6.45 to go. But still in their own zone trying to push it out. So they'll get the shift change. Six forty-five to go. Your only goal belongs to William Bell. And the draw comes back out to neutral ice, so it does come out of the zone with that one going up into the netting. The draw was initially won by Minnesota, but taken right back by New England. They'll fire the pressure shot on in front with Iverson trailing in towards the net. He couldn't find it, so it's slapped out of the zone. Back it goes. Oba Bifo looking to track it down, skating backwards into his own zone with it. Towards his own net, curling back around under the pressure from Bronshausen. Back to the blue line. Slapped up ahead on a backhanded pass to Graf. Graf has it poked away. Tucker Johnson out of Edina. Tries to work it up the near side. He had it tipped away as he's working down there in the zone now with Stanius. Six minutes to go here in this first period. The winner gets the winner of our next game tomorrow at 8.30. And a chance. Crown champions of the show. Long shot. Oran. Fired it in. It's deflected right back out. Foot race with Martin. It's going to lose that one. It's Austin Gibson got into the fray. Gonna play it back to Oran. Can Minnesota get it up cleanly? Stanius knocks it through neutral ice. And we'll go sliding all the way back down, getting some changes. Five fresh skaters for Minnesota. Five and a half minutes to go. Tap there just past the blue line, but it's tapped right back to Thornton. Thornton entered it into the zone and had it poked away. Poked away by Colchin. He tries to bring it up the near side boards, and it's slapped back to Thornton. Thornton pushes past Conway. Thornton just enough to get it to Beveridge. Beveridge sliding left to right, and he fires it home to the back. Egan Beveridge knocks home his eighth goal of the tournament, and with 5-12 to go in the first, it's 2-0 in favor of New England. All the work for New England in the Minnesota zone pays off. That time, not a long stretch in the zone, but they had worn down that Minnesota defense, so that quick sprint from Beveridge pays off. Cade Sherman fighting for the puck. Now Minnesota has to find a way to answer. 4.44 to go. Highest scoring period on the tournament so far has been the second. As in tight comes Beveridge again, looking for another. He spent some time atop the leaderboard in goal scored in this tournament. Side winding shot, bangs off the pads of Johnson. Was out there for a moment before Iverson tracks it down. New England still with possession for McOslin. He'll fire from straight away and pop it up over the crossbar. This one comes right back over. Nobody home in the middle for that centering pass. Nifty to get it up over the cage. Out comes Jack Tavares. Nobody, not everybody had touched up yet. And with four minutes and five seconds left here in this first period, New England's owning the scoreboard. 11 different goal scorers for this New England team. Eight of them have at least three goals. And the stat of the tournament that we told you coming out of pool play, only one win by less than four goals. Twice this team has won by double-digit goals. Dominating performances. 
The one time they won by less than four goals was against a team we'll see next, a 1-0 win over Rocky Mountain. Gavin Core driving in towards the near side post, lost it as he trailed below the goal line. Three and a half minutes to go in this first period. Minnesota came out pressuring. Didn't come away with a goal in the first couple of minutes, and then the pressure turned on its head, and it was New England who became the aggressors. That time it's swept wide by Bell. She overskates it to Betzold. He'll dump it up ahead for Core. Core has Betzold back in the middle, and his pass goes to the heel of his skates. Flies past him, tried to recenter. Betzold off the mark. Conway trying to chip it away from Bell. Bell gets it back at his own blue line and can just dump it ahead. Chaz Lentz will trail down after it. Trying to get something moving during this change. His pass to Ament is too strong. Taken, stayed in the zone, kept in the zone by Graf as he skates between the circles. Has it popped away, Obabifo from well outside the circle. Fires that one in towards the crease. It's deflected low, down below the goal line. Minnesota now in that spot. Two skaters come together for Minnesota as they try to clear. Back to Obabifo. His pass in towards the middle to Graf. Graf hacking at it, and the whistle is going to bring us to a stop. It's Justin Graf out of Lincoln, Massachusetts. Got on the spot on the backhand feed from Obabifo. And was stopped up by Johnson. Two and a half minutes remain. Here in semifinal number one, period number one. In the legendary Bloomington Ice Garden. Minnesota needing some defense to try and Work back into this. High stick there. It's going to bring us out to neutral ice. Actually, all the way back down. Apologies. So can Minnesota take advantage of this opportunity with two and a half minutes to go? Got Tucker Johnson back out there. He's the number two scorer on this team. His line there trying to change this in their favor. Schulte tried to chip it right back in with traffic coming at him. Couldn't do it, but it pops back in for Stanius. Stanius has Johnson back in the middle, centering pass, going over to Johnson. Fluttering puck just towed away by Thibodeau. Thibodeau did just enough. Get those splits going to get that skate even with the pipe and keep that one out. Stanius again. This time he's got Brownshausen in towards the middle. Lost the puck, poked away. Coming back down for New England and Graf. Graf working outside the circle, forced down there by Guile. Gets it right back along the goal line, centering pass. Oh, Bifo will fire that one through, and it finds the back of the net past Johnson. A 3-0 lead for New England. Oba Bifo becomes the third goal scorer here with a minute 42 to go. And it's 3-0 New England. And they win the draw, bringing it back with Beveridge. He'll flip it up. That one dangerous, pop it ahead. As Thornton will track it down in the corner. Piece of the post there for Beveridge. Obabifo's sixth goal. More pressure, another goal. This time, it's Beveridge who gets his second. You can only hold them down for so long. Minnesota was skating right with New England. And now the pressure has allowed two goals in 25 seconds. New England goal scored by number 47. Second for Beveridge. Thornton with the assist. So we're under a minute here in the opening period. Minnesota had the spring in their step early. They were taking it to New England from a pressure standpoint for the first two minutes of this game. But since then, that pressure has dried up, and it's been New England who has been forcing pressure. McOsland 
Just missed on that pass to get a potential breakaway coming along the blue line. Now he has to track it down in behind the net. Ripped around on the far side. Held up down in the corner. That shot trails off a New England skater on its way in towards the net. Tavares trying to spin and get a free look. Three minutes, or three seconds rather, remaining in the period. And that's how it's going to close with a 4-0 lead. The only power play of the period belonged to Minnesota. That's when it was scoreless. They could not make it work. And then four goals in the final 10 and a half minutes, including two in the final two minutes. And New England takes a commanding 4-0 lead to the second. It's semifinal number one from the North American Hockey Showcase on Youth Hockey Hub. Second period underway, semifinal number one. The North American Hockey Showcase for 2018. And a dominating final 10 minutes of the first period for New England has them up top four to nothing. J.W. Cox back with you here at the Bloomington Ice Gardens. Just three total games remain as that backhander finds its way through. Billy McOsland. Score is fifth of the tournament. And then make it 5 nothing. That took 26 seconds. Throughout the tournament, folks would like to believe that New England has some holes in their game or they're gettable at times. And Minnesota has put together two very good game plans against them, I've thought, over the last two contests. Arms in the air, penalty coming up. They've given them a run for their money, at least early. But you got to have the gear and the horses to go full periods at a time with New England, or eventually it's gonna catch up to you and they're gonna pile on some goals. It's happened in just about every game they have played. And right now they've poured on five goals. And Stanius picks up the penalty. So to add the insult to the five nothing score, it's a five four advantage for New England. Puck loose, free. Power play goal. Justin Graff was on the doorstep. He tapped it. Not sure if he finished it off, but it will be a sixth goal of the game for New England. It's the other issue. Once they get rolling, they're even tougher to stop. So if you hold them down, their pressure eventually wears you down and allows a goal. And from what we've seen, those goals start to come in bunches. Nick Evans off the win on the draw. Outside the circle, fires that one in front, and they'll score again. That one deflected loud off the pads of Johnson. 
But there were two different New England sticks right there, ready to redirect. And it's 7 nothing. Three goals scored in the first minute and a half of the second. McGoslin got the first. We're still sorting out the second two. 13.30 to go. And it would appear New England, barring the miraculous, is going to find themselves a game away from a show championship for 2018. Still hustling over there for James Conner. He held it in for a moment, but it was slapped back. Graf picked up the power play, so that was the sixth goal. Van Martin picked up the assist. Even strength announcement coming shortly. As Martin. So Beveridge still the only New England skater. More than one goal, so there's seven goals scored by six players. Just inside the line, taken away by Dylan Otten. Otten sprints ahead, beats two defenders, fires that one top shelf, and Dylan Otten will score again. Otten seventh of the tournament. And he will get Minnesota on the board. It's 7-1 now. Four total goals all scored by New England coming in the final 10 and a half minutes. We've had four total goals scored between the two teams here in this second period before we reach the three-minute mark. And also 11 points now for Otten, which brings him within one of the team lead four points. Ryder Betzold with eight goals, so it's also within one of the goal scoring lead. Cross check penalty called on Sam Schulte. So, second power play of the period. And that's the opportunity in front of New England. Face off, pushed out of the zone early. And we do have a change in net as Owen Lunneborg out there now for Minnesota. Lunneborg, the Bloomington native. And he's tasked with holding this down. If you're Minnesota, you have to look at it. Well, they could score seven goals in the first period plus a minute and a half. Well, we've still got a whole period and a whole lot more than a minute and a half remaining to try and score six more goals to tie this one up. A 30-goal scoring team through their first seven games of the tournament. A lot of work to do, both offensively and defensively. Lundenborg was watching that one all the way as it sails high. Beveridge walks along the goal line, taps that one out front, shoveled back down by Ben Dearden. Another try coming in on Lundenborg, and he's forced to steer it away. Ten fifty to go. One oh one to go in the penalty. Man up situation for New England. So Minnesota's going to start with this penalty kill. Wide open, Tavares overskated that one. Then he fires it into the chest of Lunneborg. That was William Bell, excuse me. Penalty will put us under 10 minutes to play here in the second period. Just like all tournament long. Get the resurface between the second and the third. The teams will take a break. That's the other thing for Minnesota. I'm trying to get all six back right now. 
See if you can at least cut it by a third and pop a couple of goals and put yourself within four going into the third. All right now on this power play, it's all possession for New England as McOslin fired that one just wide, steered away by Lundborg's glove. One timer from up top, big swing for William Bell, and that one's settled on by Lundborg. Seventeen seconds to go on the power play. And Schulte will get to hop up. From the circle, a win for Minnesota. Pulling it out of the zone. Dylan Otten had it poked away. He's the goal scorer, put the last tally on the board. Two seconds remaining in the power play. Bell flies it back through the zone, cross the ice to the far side. McLaughlin catches up to it. Still not a fifth skater out there for Minnesota. Big chance to clear right now, and they did. Now they've got their fifth skater out there, popping off the boards on the near side. Colchin couldn't handle it, pops back to Bell. Bell sends it up towards the blue line, receives the pass right back. He's in between the circles. McOslin to his left. Pass goes wide, pops off his stick. McOslin tracks it down. He's under siege, having that puck hacked at. He ends up down on a knee. Brownshausen, far side. He was tripped up, ended up down on the deck. That was actually Kellen Conway, but the result is the same. And it's a penalty on New England. So William Bell into the penalty box. 0 for 1 so far for Minnesota on the penalties. Opening draw from neutral ice, controlled. Oba Bifo starts to walk it through the circles. He has it poked away. It's swatted back to Graf. Graf maintaining. Found the stick of Oba Bifo. He'll put it off the boards and send it down low. Under 9 to play here in the second period. 7 nothing lead at one time. Dylan Otten. Scored to make it 7-1, and that's where we stand right now. 90 seconds to go in the power play. No possession time yet for Minnesota. Got to make this one work. If they want to get back in this game. Stanius up high along with Colchin. Out towards the top through traffic, deflected down by New England. Flying out from the blue line, over by Foe. He'll take it into the zone. Short-handed, walled off, puck ends up. Sliding in behind the net. Slapped away by Guile. Guile about the only guy that can try to go size for size with Oba Bifo and some of these other forwards for New England. Bell, Tavares, both stand tall on those skates. Continue to make it tough. Colchin had it tapped away. It's back to Sherman. Sherman brings it in onside. He's got his man, Betzold, in the middle. A little too strong. That was Gavin Core who chases it down now in the corner. Core trying to win possession. Betzold over there, too, hacking at it with Sherman. Core pops it up along the boards, a little too strong. Got too high and moving for Aaron. Back to New England. Down the ice for Thornton. Thornton tries to leave it back towards the middle, and it's turned over. Aaron able to send it up for Henry Ahmed. Ahmed dumps it for himself in towards the corner. Comes to a stop, trying to wall off a defender. It pops back free to Betzold. Betzold working along the goal line. Betzold trying to wrap it around, and it's tied up by Thibodeau. Ryder Betzold, the top scorer on this team. He came into Friday as the number one scorer in the tournament. That was before an incredible Friday and into Saturday run for Mason Jensen of Great Plains. Now Betzold tied for second with another great playing skater, Gavin McNeil. Poke back down the ice. That'll expire the penalty. We're back to five on five hockey with 7-12 to go here in the period. Minnesota scored the last goal, but they've still got a long way to go to try and claw back into it. They've even got a long way to go. Need to pop three goals to, at the very least, stay away from running time in the third. Ahmed through neutral ice. 
Working there with Core. Amit in the circle, trying to hang on to it, and it's just poked away. Great defensive stick work. Looked like Thornton as he's able to move it up ahead. Freddie Meyer make that beverage. Hopping through neutralized with it as Dearden has it pinned along the blue line. He pops it out and free to Bell. Bell has his pocket picked by Betzold. Betzold could not control it, but pushes it backwards. Minnesota moves it ahead into the zone. New England working it back up with Beveridge. Beveridge on the outside. Sends that pass right back into the middle for Bell. Couldn't get the shot away. Defense collapsed on him. Bell maintains. He'll flip that one up high. Knocked around by Lundborg. Lundborg could never pull it down. And a penalty is going to come up. As it looked like Lundborg was actually the one that was tripped up. If that's the call in behind the play, it's going to be a penalty. Second of the period on New England. And he'll put Beveridge into the box. So 5.57 to go here in the second, a second power play of the period third of the game for Minnesota. Wentz, aggressive pass, intercepted. Tap to Bell. He'll bring it back shorthanded. Has McOsland on his hip. Bell takes it in, fires it up, bouncing puck, just how, somehow stays out of the net. Lunneborg got a piece of that, but still looked like there was some space to have it drop behind him. Minnesota brings it back out. Stanius on the inside as it's taken in by Brownshausen. Back to Stanius off the heel of his stick. Down towards the goal line. He floats it back out to Lentz. Lentz over to the far side. Knocked around by Conway. Conway locates Brownshausen down in the corner. Has Stanius in the middle if he can find him. Instead, it's taken away by Nick Evans. Evans with the theft and wrap around far side boards. Bell had it for a moment. Back to Brownshausen. Takes it in on sides. Wraps it around looking for Stanius. Instead, it runs into Evans first. Stanius looking for some help. Doesn't get it. New England brings it all the way out. There's Bell. Bell flying past the blue line. Takes that hard shot. It ended up deflecting down along the ice and covered up by Lundeborg. Lundeborg saw that all the way, but very easily. Could have ducked out of his vision there, so he might have been expecting that one to come rising towards him. Instead, it was deflected down. 45 seconds to go in the power play. At the wrong end of the ice, though, for Minnesota. Short-handed attempt, hopped up and just pulled wide. Into the corner it goes, popped right back out. Colchin had his pocket picked. Back it comes the other way for Beveridge. And he'll send it around with 20 seconds remaining. 4.19 to go in the period. Bouncing puck crosses the ice to the far side circle. One touch up to Sherman. It neutralized too strong for him. Tap backwards by Miles Bronson for, for New England, excuse me. Minnesota now bringing it back up out of their own zone. Tapped away. On the far side boards, Colchin has it pinned up. He's popping out of the box comes Beveridge. Obabifo walking his way in. Obabifo dangles it, tries to shove back in on Lunneborg. And Lunneborg sprawling out. Obabifo trying to say that play was not dead, but the whistle came. So with 3.44 to go, it's 7-1 in favor of New England. Here in this second period. And Minnesota most definitely dealing with the clock here. The six goal spread going to the third will I mean they've got to score twice to stave off the running time. There's a beautiful feed up ahead to Amit. Amit fires the shot and it's stopped by Thibodeau. Right in on his pads and he steers it clean to the near side. Amit trying to pressure. Tucker Johnson trying to find some space. Betzold down there as well. And their top scorers as Betzold slides and rams hard into the boards on the far side, slow to get up. And he's going to limp his way to the bench. A dicey fall for Betzold. Take a seat on the bench and take a look at him with three minutes to go. Took a bad angle into the boards there as he slid down to a stop. 
Justin Graff to Oba Bifo, out to Dearden. Dearden's one-timer through the slot and tipped away. Out it comes for Ahmed. Ahmed flying, got a man inside. It was tapped away as Stanius was open. Couldn't find him through the traffic. Here comes Beveridge. Beveridge with Graff on his hip. Instead takes it wide as Graff will slide below the goal line. Beveridge and Graff playing a little handoff game. It stays with Beveridge. Back out beyond the circle. Long shot was open on the weak side, and it looked like Lundeborg reaching back with the glove, covered it up, ends up on his back. Beautiful save for Lundeborg. Damage has been done, though. 4-0 after one. Two goals in that first for Beveridge, including what right now stands as the difference-making goal. And then made it 2 nothing with 5-12 to go in the first. And then three goals in the first minute and a half of this second period to take command for New England. Another shot in on Lunneborg, steered away with the left pad. On the board's near side with a minute 56 to go. Great centering pass right in front, just shoveled wide. Again, it's back out in front, and this time it's knocked home. Looked like Nick Thornton will try to get the official call, but an eighth goal of the game for New England. One forty-five to go, so a long spread between goals. But the eighth one in the back of the net, and it's a seven-goal lead for New England. Will they be challenged again? Thornton from Evans. Offsides, minute 15 to go. So our game number two, that's likely to feature a few more thrills. The way the games for those two teams have gone. With Great Plains and Rocky Mountain. Each has played at least one overtime game in this tournament. Rocky Mountain won an overtime game earlier today. to advance to this semifinal round. And they won another overtime game in their second of the tournament, 2-1 over this Minnesota team. Final 40 seconds in tight on Lunneborg again. And this time it's swept wide. Keeping New England out of the net, but just barely. Off the boards it goes. Bell brings it into the zone. Final 12 seconds. Four in the first, four in the second. Puck pops off the boards and off the bracing of the net. Puck settled in. That'll be dropped into the corner and we'll go to the third with an 8-1 lead for New England. They are 15 minutes of running time away from playing for the tournament championship tomorrow. A four-goal second, McOsland, Graff, Martin, and Thornton. The only goal of the game comes in the second for Minnesota, and it's Dylan Otten. Back with more after this break. An 8-1 lead after two for New England here in semifinal number one of the North American Hockey Showcase for 2018. The show presented by Youth Hockey Hub.
a dominating first two periods for New England has them 15 minutes away from a date with destiny between either Rocky Mountain or Great Plains and themselves to try and win the show for 2018. It's 8-1 to one in favor of New England. Four in the first, four in the second. The only goal for Minnesota scored in the second. And that was Dylan Otten. And so we will have running time here with this seven goal margin. It was seven nothing, a minute and a half into the second period. Otten scored with 12.22 to go in the seconds. Stayed at 7-1 until Nick Thornton out of Danvers, Massachusetts, scored the eighth goal of the game for New England. So we will have one more semifinal game here from the Bloomington Ice Garden. Scheduled for 645. Barring the strange, wild, and wacky here, that should not be altered. We'd get Rocky Mountain taking on Great Plains. As this one ends up right out in front, Lundeborg trying to clear it and eventually slides wide. Nobody on that near side for New England, or they might have had a chance to slam it back for a ninth goal. 13.30 remaining here in the third. And the score's just staggering for New England here in the tournament. The number of goals and the number of goal scorers also as Stanius takes it right down the slot. He fires it in off the pads of Thibodeau, and it's swept wide. Defense right on the spot for the netminder Thibodeau, who made the save on the pads, but that was a gorgeous rebound opportunity, but the only sweaters there were red. Nick Evans dumps it down into the zone. That'll be the icing. 8-2, 11-1, 12-0, 6-1, 7-3. -1, 1 -0 victory over Rocky Mountain. Two shutouts, two other times with just a single goal allowed. Minnesota, to this point, had been the only team to get them for three goals. After Great Plains put up two in the opener. Will that be our rematch, or will we get the rematch from Mariucci in what may have been the regulation game of the tournament, a one nothing final between Rocky Mountain and New England. Popped back out in front. Or two it is bounce up over the crossbar for New England. Could knock it home. Lundborg standing in net. You're basically on his home turf. For the last 12 minutes here of his run in the show. Played backwards, Miles Brosnan. Tracks it back to his own goal line. He'll shift it across to the near side for James Conner. 11 and a half minutes to go. Turned over to Minnesota from the far side circle. Fed inside, knocked away by Brosnan. Defenders in the way of pucks. It's not just that scoring, though. That defense we mentioned holding down the goals as that one pops back out to Otten. He had a chance in it. Second swipe from the near side. Just bangs off the side of the cage and is swept clean. Doing those little things for New England. Factoring into some of these defensive numbers. Taken away at neutral ice by Bell. Bell got the stor scoring started. We went scoreless for four and a half minutes. Of which the first two, Minnesota seemed to dominate. They were the aggressors. They had the energy and the chances early against Thibodeau but could get nothing to go past him. And then quickly the game turned. That Bell goal, then they would score five minutes later. Beveridge, the first of two in the first period. What is still right now the decisive second goal of this game. Oba Bifo would get the third, and then 25 seconds later, Beveridge would score his second to make it 4 nothing. And we remarked as the second period began that seemingly with New England, when it rains, it pours. And that's exactly what happened. The first minute and a half, they scored three goals to go up 7-0. Otten has got the goal for Minnesota. Took the draw, had it poked back out at it. Up and down run from Minnesota. 
beat USA in a tight one goal game to open things up. Fell by a goal to Rocky Mountain. Doubled up by Great Plains, eight to four. And then had their high point winning back-to-back -back games, beating Great Lakes at Mariucci and North America over on rink two. But since then, outscored by a combined, well, outscored by four goals by New England. First time through to close out pool play as Lunenborg clamps down on it. And then a big 8-3 win over Great Lakes. They were tested in that game against Great Lakes. But Minnesota prevails, winning by five. And they come right back here. Four victories and an overtime loss. Ended up as the fourth team in that top four. Out of the seven-team field here on the week. And the run, unfortunately, just less than nine minutes away from ending for this Minnesota squad. Great Plains watching behind the glass. They'll have plenty of time before their game is scheduled to start and get themselves ready, take the rest of this one in. Both for Great Plains and Rocky Mountain as Minnesota keeps it between the circles, attacking, punching away, but the defense pulls it out for New England. Back down the ice, a wide turn for Evans. Evans bangs it off the board's far side. Now nearly slid right even with the goal line. Popped all the way out to Beverly. Down to Graff. Both Rocky Mountain and Great Plains get a good look here at what they're up against as Graff has it out in front of the crease and bangs it back home. His second goal of the game. And it's 9-1. to one. Thought New England had even broken the music. The sound you heard was another goal from New England. Their high on the tournament was 12 goals. He did that against Great Lakes, shutting about 12 nothing, and a second goal popping in for Minnesota now on the break, directly off the draw. And Minnesota will get one back with seven minutes to go to make it nine to two. Bronzehausen wins control of that draw to Tucker Johnson. He shovels it onto the pads of Thibodeau, bangs back out. Aurin moving it through traffic. That one winds its way behind the net. Slapped around and back out. Here it comes for Thornton. New England with the 9-2 lead with six and a half minutes remaining here in the third. Back out in front, swept away from McGosland. For Graf, by the way, that is his team high eighth goal. Beveridge actually now with nine in his two goals. Bell also with eight. So tied for second now. Actually, no tied for first, as that's his second. So nine apiece for Beveridge and Graf. Stanius scores the goal. Johnson and Gibson on the assist. So Stanius scores again. That is his fifth of the tournament. To go along with five assists, gets to double figures in points. Tipped off the stick of William Bell. Cleared wide as we're under five and a half minutes to go here in this third period. Into the corner, McOslin trying to pry it away. Stays behind the goal line. Now hops up high, curled it around. It popped out from under the crossbar. Somehow didn't go in. And poked away by Lunneborg. McOslin walking the tightrope, flips it up. And it hit 
two parts of that crossbar and fell down outside the goal line. Can't get much closer to a goal without scoring one. It's 9-2. McCosland wins the draw. Back out it goes to Bell. His shot comes in quickly, clamped on by Lunneborg. 8.30 tomorrow, we'll have the showdown for the championship of the show. Conway below the goal line, trying to flip it away from Obabifo. Like that, Tavares. He wraps it around, looking for help. With speed comes McOsland. McOsland taps it back to Tavares. Trailing back in. Back in neutral ice it goes. Slips to Otten. Otten with Kulchin in the middle. Sherman cycling down to try and catch up to it in the corner. Back out it goes to Chaz Lentz. Lentz has his pass intercepted. Coming in for Tavares. Bell taps it down. Tavares back out in front with McCoslin there. Bell keeps it above the circle. Had it poked away. Lentz, he'll send it off the boards. He was looking for Colchin that time. Too strong with three and a half to go. It'll be an icing. In the slot, spinning, backhand try for Van Martin. Ends up going wide. More pressure from New England. Nine goals here in this one. Four in the first two periods each. One more here in the third. Another chip and a save for Lundenborg. He did not get the start in this game. It was Jackson Johnson. Took the starting nod, and he was pulled. But the pressure that was applied by New England well, might not have mattered who was back in net from the start in this one. Final two minutes and 15 seconds. New England in that one nothing game, they scored their lone goal in the second. It was Aaron Ababaifo at even strength. It's your lone outlier where they haven't just been dominant. Centering pass out in front, lots of traffic. Thibodeau stays calm, floating in front of that near side post. Minute 50 to go. In front, Stanius loses his stick. Slides into the corner as... Pass to Oba. Bifo's a little bit strong. Back towards the blue line and coming back out. Chipped up ahead along the boards. Inside the final 90 seconds. That centering pass a little too strong. And with a minute 20 and counting. Bring a face off out to neutral ice. Quickly down inside. There is one minute remaining in the third period. Under a minute to go, back the other way. Stanius and Otten scoring the two goals. Most games of this tournament against a lot of teams. Put those two goals in there, and you've still got a fighting chance late. Unfortunately, New England, not most teams. They have scored nine goals yet again. for the third time in this tournament with as many as nine. In tight towards the net, whistle. The net coming loose is gonna bring us to a stop as Beveridge knocked it down. They've gotta umpire, unpile, excuse me, the bodies and put the net back. By the time they do that, we'll have just seconds remaining. Are we even gonna draw it? Yeah, I don't think we will. 
New England's going to win it, 9-2. It was running time. That ends it. Goals for Otten and Stanius. Beveridge has two. Graf with two. Martin, Thornton, McGoslin, Bell, and Obabifo with the others. And it's a 9-2 final here in semifinal number one. We'll head down and we will talk to Egan Beveridge, who scored two goals, including what for the most of this game was the decisive second goal. Pair of goals for him, pair of goals for Graf. We'll talk to him. React to this game here is. All right, back here with Youth Hockey Club player of the game, Egan Beveridge, after a convincing win in the semi semifinals. Egan, you guys have kind of been rolling through this whole tournament. What's been working best for you guys all week long? Uh, you know, passing the puck, shooting the puck, always, like, grinding the net. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you know, got to keep doing what we're doing to win the championship. All right, you had two goals in this game. The second one there hung around as the game-winning goal until the very end. What did you see on that second goal for you? How would you get that one into the net? Uh, I forget what, how I scored. That was a long time ago. That's true. That's true. What's been the high point of this point for the tournament for you guys? Uh, probably hanging out with my, my friends and uh, playing some hockey, you know. Um, just a great experience. You guys got to get some rest now. Early game tomorrow. What's the plan to be ready to play and win for a championship? Um, just like, play like a regular game. Keep doing what we're doing. Hopefully that works for us. All right. Guess, best of luck. Congrats on the win. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. That's it. The undefeated New England squad. They'll go play for the championship tomorrow at 8.30. One more semifinal to come from the show 2018 from the Bloomington Ice Garden on Youth Hockey Hub.